Hey everyone, this is Albert Valentin, aka World Film Geek. Welcome to the third episode of the World Film Geek podcast. And I am honored today to have one of the best new South African actors and filmmakers out there, Cameron Scott. Coming from Johannesburg, he starred in the film Triggered. He has a new short film out at the LA Shorts International Film Fest this week called Ring of Beasts. And next month, you'll get to see him on Netflix in the Kissing Booth 3. So without further ado, welcome my guest, Cameron Scott. How's it going, Cameron? What's up, man? Albert, dude, this is such a flipping great experience. I mean, you it doesn't feel like a long time to the, like the public, but I mean, Triggered, Triggered was filmed in 2019. Kissing Booth 3 was filmed in 2019. Um, you know, Beast was filmed in 2020, but it's only like coming out now. So it's just been a long time coming, man. And I'm super stoked to be speaking to you now. That's awesome. Yeah. Tr and Triggered, we got it last November and then it came out in South Africa in January. So I don't know how we got it first before you guys did, but still. Hey, man, it, it that's, was that's, a that's what we make. I mean, we all, we all in American accents in the film, you know, so that, that, that's, who we, that's who we made it for, man. We knew it. And we were like, take it. I yeah. mean, I think it makes up for all the Marvel movies we, we get first sometimes, yeah. you know? Exactly. That's awesome. So let's talk about Ring of Beasts, because this was a short film that you wrote and you co-produced and you play the role of Romulus, who is one of the titular beasts of the film, because, you know, you you go from this young guy to becoming this able-bodied fighter. How did this project come about? Where, where did it all come from? Oh, man, that's a that's a great question. And I really want one of actually my favorite to answer because of how how close the the project originates for me so i did a, a short film the first the first uh, time I, I i did a directing producing uh writing writing stint was called the relay in 20, 2018 and um the relay kind of paved the way for the ring of beasts in, in in many ways one of one of them was it attracted the attention of an animal rights group called the spca uh in south africa and they kind of approached me after the seeing the film and said would you be open to doing a movie about dog fighting you know, like a, an activism piece almost about dog fighting, an anti-dog anti fighting movie. Um, and I love dogs, <laughs> big dog <laughs> fan. Um, so I agreed to take looking into this project and I met up with a whole bunch of lieutenants and uh, people who work in the space with the police uh, to infiltrate these rings to kind of just get some research going. Um, and I got to tell you, man, like it, it really hit me hard. It, it really hit me hard. The, a lot of people, I mean, you, you don't even want to think about dog fighting, you know, if you right. are an animal lover. Um, but when you actually see, you know, evidence and, and photos and, and the court cases of, 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 of what goes down, it's, it's surreal. It's another yeah. world that exists inside our world. And it's, and it's a blood sport that has existed before the Roman Colosseum, you know. Um, and it's been almost in many ways perfected in the, in the you know, the kind of the breeding and the, 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 the syndication of these rings today. Um, and it kind of got me thinking, man, <laughs> this is a whole world that's happening underneath our nose. Like we don't, and, 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 and we know about it. It's not like, you know, we don't know about it. Like we know about war and we know about these, these things that happen, but not too many people want to do anything about it because it makes you uncomfortable to even acknowledge that it exists. Um, and, and I had, to, I had to get, I got to this point and I talk a lot about this. Uh, we're, we're dropping um, a, a series on the story behind the story to go into more detail, but um, uh, I'll, I'll gloss it over for, um, for time is I got to this point where I realized I can't make a movie about dog fighting because without making dogs and you commented on it in your review without making dogs actually fight each other, you know what I mean? And I wasn't going to CGI it because that would just take away from the severity of what it looks, what it is. Yeah. So I'm, you that I'm not going to do it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So I'm not going to do that. And then all of a sudden in my mind, it was like, what if the dogs are human beings? <laughs> you know what I mean? Because yeah. I can, can, can I can speak to a human being. Human beings understand space and distance. You can get some good performers in there. Um, and I think that was one of the defining moments. And you're going to love this. You are going to love this. Raina, my amazing uh, co-star on uh, Triggered. <laughs> we're sitting in, the, we're sitting in a, a golf cart going down to set the one day. And just so everybody knows, it was like shooting from five to five the other way around. So we're shooting um, uh, night for <clears throat> yeah night for day in the, in the sense that our days were our night times. Lunch was at twelve p.m. I mean twelve a.m. Uh, it was all messed up. <laughs> <laughs> we're on the way down to set from 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 base camp, and I, I looked at Ray and I'm like looking up at the sky and I'm like, you know, Ray, I got this really cool idea. 
that I want to get, I want to make. And I'm like, it's like an early stages, but like, you know, and she's like, okay, cool. Like, what is it? And then I just told her the story about, you know, uh, this guy who, who's raised as like an animal, right. And like, and then believes he becomes an animal. And I said to her, and I just, I just see this like mask, dude, like there's this mask on this guy's face and like, he's got a, he's, he's a savage. <laughs> so Raina looks at me and she goes, why don't you make the mask? And I'm like, I mean, like, I'm, I, I don't know how to make a mask. Like, are you kidding me? <laughs> you know, like, like I ask, you know, yeah. and like, um, so she says, no, 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 no. Like, I think you should honestly pursue and making this mask. Like, what would it look like? So, um, and there's actually a photo of me, uh, her and Kayla on set, uh, with me wearing this first like prototype surgical beast mask, you know? Oh, wow. <laughs> Yeah. And then uh, a couple months later, like it's, it's in development and we're going through all these different renditions and I'm in a very talented uh, 3D, um, 3D printer called Jared Norman, who's phenomenal, you know, and like me and him got so excited about this project and stuff. And then uh, I'm training for Kissing Booth in the gym and I get this thing on my phone and it's Jared and he's like, hey, dude, what do you think? First design. I could not believe my eyes, Albert, like and, and eventually what it would lead to is the formation of something like this. I got to say you know? that that mask looks amazing i mean that's yeah. that's something like over here i would expect a special effects wizard like tom savini to make something like that yeah but that's dude, something it, he would design for like one of his horror movies that he would be assigned to that mask looks amazing hands down thank you man and and it really i mean and this way we went through a couple of renditions this is the second this is mark two actually uh of the auditions the first one which currently is uh in the possession of adriana magala our wonderful director is like should see that one man like that thing is huge like honestly it like in over encapsulates the face you know and it's almost like yeah. you can't there's no there's no room for like performance on an actor but it's like very intimidating like when you see that yeah. mask you're like oh shit you know uh, excuse my language that's all right <laughs> but um <laughs> yeah uh and you know i got i gotta say this is this is a big up says uh we we built this before 2020 so you best believe when when masks started being instituted i was rocking this baby out boy like i was just like <laughs> the apocalypse is now let's run it you know what i mean yeah so, <laughs> so yeah. yeah dude it's um i will i will tell cool. you let's back to the dog fighting i got a personal experience with that so this was oh, many wow. many moons ago i was i was um i was with my wife and we were in our back we were in the backyard and uh all of a sudden i look outside and i see this dog there and i'm going where, where'd this dog come from so, you know, we call animal control because we have no idea what it was. This dog was more scared than anything. It wasn't aggressive. So we waited for animal control. We took care of it. You know, we, were, we gave it food. We gave it water. We comforted it. Animal control came like two and a half hours later. We later found out that it was part of a dog fighting ring. And the guys were getting busted this, and from Orlando. So they just started throwing them in like various backyards. You know, and like they were like, we got, we were getting, we we're, they were picking up a lot of these dogs. So, yeah, I understand how you felt, like how it's surreal because seeing that from a personal viewpoint, to see an actual victim of this, this type of thing, that, that was just mind blowing for me. And I still think about it sometimes to this day, but, you know, it, sh it shakes you, man. Like, honestly, uh, when you, when, when, when I learned, so this was one of the things that, that like led me onto this thing where I was like, I can't, I can't do this. You know, I, I can't make a film about dog fighting with dogs is there was this, there's this um, very famous case where the dog fought and the dog lost and the owner was so displeased. He, uh, he took the dog outside and attached the house jumper cables. I mean, attached jumper cables to the transformer of the house until the dog died. Oh and my it's just God. like, yeah. And you know, it's, it's like, like what kind of psychology, you know, does it for, for a, a human being to, to treat an animal like that, you know? Yeah. Um, so yeah, dude, like, and I'm, I'm really happy to hear that you guys, you guys took care of it because yeah, it I is, mean, it's, it's horrific, man. Yeah. He, well, yeah. This dog wasn't aggressive. He was more scared of anything. And yeah, you know, thankfully when we fed him, you know, fed it, you know, he was eating it and you know, we were, he saw that we were, we weren't there to hurt him, and, you know, yeah. thankfully. But I will say the idea of using humans as beasts, that reminded me of a, a Jet Li film that came out called Unleashed, Unleashed. where he's he's collared. And then once that collar comes off, he just, that's when he goes <laughs> into beast, beast mode. And then, yeah. you know, but he learned about humanity throughout the film, which, you know, that's like the heart of the film where he's yeah. with Morgan Freeman, 
But then you got Bob Hoskins as the the guy who raised him to be this monster. Yeah. And yeah. that was such a good movie, man. Uh, Dude, that was so a, a good a good friend of mine, uh, Jody Romero, out in uh, California, who I'm going to be seeing in a couple couple weeks. Um, he showed me Unleashed ages ago. We were we were in um, in Sonata, Mexico, you know, just doing uh, doing some stuff out there, mm-hmm. and he he just said to me, "Bro, you gotta you gotta watch this movie. This this movie about like Jet Li." uh it's just wild like i mean jet lee's jet lee but like this movie's premise is really cool so i definitely think in the back of my mind there might there might have been a little bit of that inspiration from it because before before it was even a dog thing i mean i thought about having like a surgical mask on someone and them being like um like a doctor or something you know that like botched an operation and now has to repay their penance by like you know taking lives instead of saving them i don't know you know and that was like that was an early formation man so i think yeah jet lee that's such a good movie, man. Like it, it's, it's honestly in my mind, one of the, one of, one of the films where I can honestly say it was definitely a good, good inspo for, for Beast. I love being yeah. inspired by films. Yeah. I, I honestly believe that every story that we tell, we are inspired by other people's work. Oh know? yeah. I mean, look at, yeah. I mean, I, I talked with um, Alistair Orr and, you know, Triggered was, you know, he said his influences were Battle Royale, Saw, oh, yeah. Greg McLean's films. Yeah. You're always going to have that. And then I started watching, I watched like all of his other films and yeah, I could see where he's, his influences come from with all his other films that he directed. And, you know, it's obvious, like, you know, you always, you know, they always say imitation is the best form of flattery. Oh and, yeah. And, for sure. you, know, you know, they always say that. And, but influences, I think is even better because you're inspired by these filmmakers to make, and then you know, they inspire you to make your own oh, personal dude, version of that. You're going to love this, Albert. So imitation comes before innovation so you must imitate before you can innovate there you go that's that's the way to go yeah yeah so that's an acting thing that in terms of act craft and technique that i learned a couple years ago that i i like was i was i was at a bar dude in la and i was like scrambling for like my phone or a pen so i could take that note down because i was like that's good like that's yeah that's it dude exactly (laughs) you know when you get those things at bars man when you get these like Yeah. You know, these like little these little glimpses of like utter truths when you're out you know yeah. and you're like oh i need to i need to write that down or i got i gotta i gotta remember, remember that you know <laughs> definitely and i gotta say the yeah. cat like besides you you were you were just badass as ron was hands down the way you were raised but hungani did a good job too i remember seeing him in the hex and he you know yeah. he's he's a really good actor and i like that i think in some ways his character of remus even though he was trained to be this fighter he has that shred of humanity because he's oh yeah he has that his character's in love with the owner's daughter, his owner's daughter. And, yeah. you know, and he, but he respects at the same time, he respects the master. You know, like, I can't fall in love with you yet because out of respect for the owner. And I, I, I like that. That's a little bit of the opposite side of the spectrum and Dude, did some great working with him. I'm so, it was, it was, it was, it was surreal to work with this entire cast. You know, we really, really were spoiled for choice. I think at the beginning, you know, when you, when you undertake to do a short film, you're like, oh man, like, how am I going to, um you know i need to get the right roles for everything and then we were auditioning people and it was like man we gotta pick now and it's difficult because yeah. there were so many different nuances and, and pros and cons to every single person because all of them were very talented and all of them were like working recognizable south african faces you know yeah i, I mean um, i recognize yeah i recognize jonathan from a movie that came out 30 almost 35 years ago and that was american ninja 2 how dope he- he played or he played this Marine who was kind of like, like kind of working for the bad guys. Like he was the one who would, he would hide and then his fellow Marines would get beaten up by ninjas and then kidnapped. <laughs> so he was kind of like the trait, the traitor who Dude, I, I got to watch Ameri- I, what, American Ninja. American yeah. Ninja 2. American Dude, Ninja 2. I, got, they shot, I yeah, they shot in, yeah. They shot in South Africa. Oh, dude, I, I got to watch him. Yeah. So he's he, worked, he's worked with big people, man. Like, yeah. uh, and he's honestly, a he's a, a personal personal role model to me in in terms of his craft you know he's a he's a real real stand-up guy a, a real a real um amazing human being like i, I can't even begin to tell you that yeah. scene when we're in the pit there was something there was something that day that was just so prevalent uh as an art form that was there you know um and i could tell you some crazy <laughs> crazy stories about what actually happened you know while we while we were shooting um but just to kind of yeah go back to even hungani hungani is a phenomenal performer and um he was one of the first people that i attached to the project you know i just walked up to him even before the first draft was finished and i said dude i, I got this and i just think you're absolutely the right person to play it you know 
I do believe in the projects that I'm uh, that going forward. There's like definitive roles and it's like those roles. If you can't get a specific person, then don't make the movie or don't make the series or don't make the, yeah. whatever, you know, because that's, that is, that, that is just how it is. And that you picked up on those things are, 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 is really, really profound for us as a team, because that's exactly what we wanted to craft. So the whole, the whole fable of the ring of beasts, yeah, well, particularly this segment of the story, Romulus and Remus's story yeah. is looking at an old Nelson Mandela quote that said, no man is born hating another human being. You must be taught to hate another human being, you know? Um, and just as a human being can be taught to hate, they can be taught to love. And love comes more naturally to the human heart. So you picking up on that, that, that sense of, of, um, of uh, you know, humanity and, 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 and just honor in, in Remus as a character is, is, is really a, a big thing for us. So, so yeah. thank you for noticing that, you know? It's awesome. Uh, and it makes you think, bro, like, you know, I mean, if you're talking about like racism and stuff, you know, the, the whole film is also about like, and this is actually a thing, dude, like a woman can give birth to twins who are different races, like one, yeah. one black, one white. You yep. know, and a lot of people be like, no way, man, that's fictional. And I'm like, dude, go Google it. Like it's case studies, it's proven. Oh, I mean, you can even have, but, yeah, I mean, you can, have, you can even have African-Americans with blonde hair, blue eyes. Like, you know, I've seen them. So, you know, it's, it's no different than that, basically, you know. It's, yeah. it's, it's genetics, but our, our minds and the way that culturally we're, we're, we're shaped, we're like, oh man, like that's not, that, that can't be, you know, like a, a black guy and a white guy can't be brothers, blood brothers, not even like, you know, yeah. just like friends, like blood brothers um and so that challenges that whole that whole idea you know and then also the whole the whole notion that like romulus was like tortured and like made to hate things in the world out of fear and remus is in the circumstance where you know and it's not about their color it's just about the way that they they are raised but there is like i guess there is a little bit of an underlying metaphor that i wanted to weave into the story about black and and white people particularly in the context of south africa you know? yeah considering considering you were born like at, when apart like after apartheid ended you know yeah yeah so i, I, I and, first year literally the first year of the freeborns they call us born freaks yeah so we yeah, were I, spoke, uh, yeah, I was born first year yeah. yeah what's interesting is i spoke with uh chris jafta hungani's co-star of the hex a while back and <laughs> nice. we talked about we talked about a movie called killer be killed it was a south african karate movie from like the 70s and this was you know of course it was made during apartheid there was only one black fighter in that whole movie and he wins his fight against the opponents in, in this tournament. So I'm like, could this be a precursor to what could happen with apartheid ends? Like I brought that up and we're just like, well, that's possible. <laughs> you know. So, <laughs> but to see that, like, I'm like, I'm thinking most like all everyone's white, but then you got one black fighter in this whole movie, but he wins his fight. That's the that's the like irony. The whole thing. Considering yeah. With, yeah. So I was like, I found that very interesting yeah no that is that is that is very interesting i mean it, it, it kind of leads me to what we were talking about a little bit before we we hit record is yeah. what would you consider to be some of your favorite movies there we go okay so i have like favorite movies in different genres in some ways so i would say my favorite all-time favorite horror film is the texas chainsaw massacre nice um, the original i actually have a bunch of like a leatherface figures and all that now nice. um my favorite comedies are a league of their own about the girls baseball team with tom hanks um that's a very i think that's kind of even though it was fictionalized it was very important because it it was like about one of the great you know baseball and how women played during world war ii because the guys were at war fighting yeah um it's one of my favorite movies of all time now. hey <laughs> dude i love it man it that's awesome bro. there it is right that's... there triggered yep that's awesome, so, man. That's one of my favorite it, films now i also Recently, I real I do love some live action anime and manga stuff. Um, I will say the worst one ever is Dragon Ball Evolution. I don't even talk about that one. <laughs> no, let's let's not. Let's not. I mean, yes, I, I'm, I'm even gonna. But, I mean, I could have told you. You could have said there's one movie I don't talk about. Yeah, and I would have known exactly. And I'm pretty sure everybody <laughs> see, listening to this. There you go. Would have known you what know you're talking you about. But I will say I did get to see Roroni Kenshin the final, which is on Netflix a few weeks ago. Yes. How good that is Roroni Kenshin? Was amazing it was did you one, see the first three have you seen the I've first seen three first three i've seen the first three. Oh I, my like, goodness and i heard Don't even get me started i'm about to yeah, geek out and i heard the beginning the the last one is even better that's what i've heard i read reviews they said it, the finale ends, the, 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 the one that they just released they just released yeah it out. yeah i they said it's like the, the it, it ends on the highest note imaginable so i'm like i cannot wait to see that 
Dude, now you got me pumped, bro. Like, yeah, I was going to do go. some more, like, beast prep stuff now. But, man, that's got me pumped. I know what I'm doing in the rest of the year. Yeah, there you go. Um, that was just amazing. And just find out that you're a big anime fan, too. That's just awesome, too. <laughs> just Yeah, dude. Flipping. My Hero Academia, let me tell you. My Hero Academia has superseded any narrative of heroes. Oh, definitely. Me. I got like I got the first season. I got the two I got the two movies. The, the two so, films. I got some of the so Funko good. Pops. Even my yeah, key chain, even my keychain is uh Decker. So it's just oh, like, Decker, bro. Is it gonna die? Oh bro, yeah, no, it's awesome, it. man. It's yeah. very, very awesome. And I, I'm I about to key- start Attack on Titan, so we'll see how that goes. That was- oh yeah, I well, I've been watching Attack on Titan since it started, so you know, I'm waiting for the finale, and then I heard Andy Muschietti's going to do a live action movie after The Flash. So, uh, and if he, anyone could direct that, I think it could be him. Yeah. Considering yeah, his sure. resume. This new Flash cast is also looking dope, eh? Yeah. Michael Keaton back as Batman. I mean, this back is- as Batman, dude. I mean, I'm not going to lie. After the Snyder Cut, like, I'm, I mean, I don't know about like your opinion. And it takes a lot for me to not like a movie like a Star Wars or a Marvel movie or a DC movie, yeah. you know? um because i'm i'm such a big fan of like the fantasy sci-fi genre yeah me too um so it honestly takes a lot for me to not like something <laughs> right um and i did not like justice league at all like yeah. at the, all the snyder cut was better i mean i didn't like yeah it. the, the episode, snyder cut was my, redemption exactly that, that, yeah that was redemption like that's what i felt with with um the movie we're not going to talk about but yeah that was redemption for everyone like later on like because the writer admitted that he only did it for the money, but then he directed a martial arts flick that year, same year called Blood and Bone. And I'm like, you just redeemed yourself because that's one of, <laughs> that was one of Michael Jai White's <laughs> best movies right there, Blood and Bone. And then, then uh, the guy playing Goku and Bulma, they did Shameless together. So I'm like, they redeemed yeah, themselves with Shameless. Yes. Holy crap, dude, I completely, that flew right past me because of, I mean, obvious reasons, but it flew right past oh, yeah. me. <laughs> yeah, you think about it. And then you watch Shameless, you're like, that's Goku and Bulma. It's like, <laughs> oh my God. That's that's redacted and redacted. <laughs> yeah, just, but there, yeah, there's some other bad ones like Mortal Kombat Annihilation. I wasn't too thrilled with that one. Yeah. I did yeah, like the I new one though. You. I mean, a lot of people like didn't like I did like the new one. So I, I, I mean, we had a we had a we had a comment on 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 a subreddit that that the trailer for Ring of Beasts look looked more story driven than the latest Mortal Kombat. <laughs> yeah. Mortal Kombat. It w- yeah, it was more story driven because they didn't have the term, but I know they're gonna do that for the sequel. Yeah. You know, I mean the- um the so there's quite a few stunt I mean we work with phenomenal stunt people. Yeah I was gonna ask because that's that's the next topic the fight scenes you you hold your own dude like bro and bro. I've seen I've seen some of your pictures where you're throwing kicks and stuff. I'm like dude do you do you do you got something to tell me like you don't know you know martial arts and not tell me this you have a background mm. you just do it for fun i uh, don't no, no, dude no i i i got a, i got a background i got a background uh one that i do not talk about but no, <laughs> uh, <laughs> um so i've i've always been a i'm actually a huge like rioni kenshin dude is is right up my alley because i'm i am a lifetime lover of the arts of the sword yeah um big fan of um bushiru the the, the way of the samurai and um and and just like the appreciation like Ishiro and um and Kendo and just like sword art dude like you know even if it's you know um if it is choreographed or if it's if it's real application I've always loved this the the sword and like what a sword can represent and that's why I really like like, love the movie you know yeah Uh, they kind of asked that narrative and there's a badass scene dude in the first one where he walks up and he and then she he's like she's foolish to think that this is anything but a killing weapon but I like the idea and I'll fight. For yeah. <laughs> so. well, wait, till, wait till you see the final. I mean, I even saw the training videos of the lead, the actor and the villain, the, the guys playing them doing the stunt training. And I was, and then saw that seeing the movie and seeing what they, they trained in, I was blown away. Mm-hmm. Like they have one of the best stunt coordinators in the business in Japan. Yeah, for sure. Um, for sure. I mean, I, yeah, from the first one, I could, I could, I could even, I could oh, see that. Oh, Kenji, Kenji Tanagaki, and he, and he worked on Snake Eyes. That's coming out. The Snake Eyes, GI Joe. Oh, Snake Eyes, dude! I know a couple of people who worked on that, dude. I'm yeah. really, really, I'm, I'm stoked yeah, to see. Yeah, and yeah, the guy, the guy who choreographed uh, Ronin Kenshin did uh, Snake Eyes also. Oh, so, oh, but I want to work with that guy one day. I just, I just, I really yeah. want to work with that guy. Like people like that are like total heroes to me. Yeah. Um, we so yeah yeah to ask to answer your question about the stunts man i've been so keen to do some more and more stunt work man like if i tell you 
before, I mean, just after I did trick it, literally the day afterwards, I went home, shaved my beard, um, cut my hair, we shipped off to a place called Hootsprays up in South Africa. It's like this, like, you know, jungle dance. They were filming a, a TV show called uh, I'm a Celebrity, Get Me Out of Here, France. And I was doing stunt work for the production because I wanted to learn how to, you know, do, do more it. stunt stuff. And it was like, dude, jumping off of mountains. It was like, you know, I kid you not, there's a video of me walking off of a cliff with a with a with one boxing glove and a ba and a basketball shooting a hoop and getting it <laughs> as i jumped off <laughs> so like oh man i'll i'll send you the video it's hilarious yeah um but overall this was something that i have been wanting to do for the longest time i love big fan of choreography uh even in triggered man like th th that scene with kato like oh my god that's like my, that's like one of my all time favorite scenes especially cuz you guys rip each other off and I'm never, never going to let go of the name Bateman because of it. That's just like. <laughs> dude, I promise you. And there was that one scene like, so like, I'm on the floor, dude. And he's like, hitting me. He's like, 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 you know, I can't even remember what he said. But in my mind, bro, like, it's been diet, like dazed and tired and stuff. I just looked up at him and I'm like, well, if I were to pause it, because that's what they ripped a rhino <laughs> off about. Yeah, <laughs> it wasn't I, in a I, script. And I was like, yes. <laughs> yeah, I remember that. Um. So I saw the Instagram live Q and A with the whole cast, and I remember yeah. Stephen and Russell saying that they actually hit each other during their fight because they want to make it real, as real as possible. So they yeah. they actually were like, they actually beat each other up at like certain that's points. A, to me, it's like whoa, that's bro. I'm like, I'm like, that's dedication right there, man. If you really, yeah, yeah. really want to give it your all during the stunts, you, you know. We had a maybe so we had a um maybe it's we, we had an oh sorry, head go ahead. They should get you for John Wick. <laughs> oh, did we just did we just overlap with each other? Damn freaking lag. It's okay, don't worry. Yeah, we're uh, good. So, so what, what what happened was um I'm a you know there's some people I, I know in the states and they they they, they work in the the stunt industry um in LA and they yeah, they, no, they I've been I very myself. <laughs> yeah yeah so like jam jam movements mm -hmm. uh you know like, I mean jam like joining all movements and and stuff places like to uh, like train. And I, I've been very happy to be like mentored by a lot of those those people, you know. I owe them I owe them a lot. Um, and 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 some of the basic principles are, are like what we you know applied here. Uh, and it's crazy, man. There's an entire sequence that we actually didn't even get to shoot because of time. Um, oh, there were there were there were two. I mean, and yeah, three other fight sequences in Beast that we didn't get to show, um, which was was pretty hectic. One was in the the ring in the beginning with Johnny. Mm -hmm. uh not with me and hungani but with the other fighters yeah. the other one was um in the the front of the film uh there was this like to just like introduce everybody like this is what a ring looks like you yeah. know there was a ring of beasts uh fight and then at the end uh with ruck romulus and ruck when they fight and, and we see the ending of it but that entire fight is like it was like so was much fun to choreograph dude yeah. like he kicks my ass <laughs> you know like um and 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 yeah we didn't we didn't have any injuries dude any any um we didn't have any like slip ups or, or anything we had a, a few close calls like i mean when i jumped over the fire dude i nearly like singed singed my my bum a little bit bro but like other than that yeah it was good <laughs> oh that's good at least it was mostly safe <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. At least yeah, it's not exactly. like Thailand. Those guys, you, you ever see those Thai movies like Ambok and all those? Those, those guys are nuts. They were just, yeah. they really hit each other. Like, like you fear for their lives. Like, they don't care. They do it for entertainment, man. They just that, like, yeah, they, that dude. Really knock I, each other out. I'd be willing to do something like that. You know, I, I, I really, really would. But I'd want to go in with the intention that that's what's happening. You know what I mean? Uh, yeah. Especially because, like, <laughs> it's like, okay, we do another take and it's like, cool. <laughs> we do another take and it's like, okay we do another take it's like all right like i'm getting been like broken now you know and like you, you, the, the the last thing you want to do is is, is cripple production because you you hurt right. yourself you know yeah like, um it's like, but am i hurts. willing to get hurt yeah. dude i went to the hospital from beast really yeah so in the scene with johnny yeah under the in the pit um there's a uh that floor was like whoa bro like filthy dude uh, as I'm like, as I get in there, like I look, like look down, but there's like a rat dude that was like shriveled up. And I was, <laughs> I was like, method. <laughs> you know? uh, and I, 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 um, we did the scene, dude. Uh, one of the takes in the scene, and dude, just to give you like insight about like how, how intense this thing was. 
is you remember the, the, the chain around my neck. So the first couple um, shots that we did, like I lunged forward and the chain like holds me. And then there was one take where I lunged forward and the chain broke like, oh. off my neck. And that was the one that we actually ended up using in the film. Uh, in the trailer, just a fun fact, in the trailer at the end, the last shot in the trailer mm -hmm. is the this, this, this shot that we didn't use in the film. Oh, wow. Uh, but then you can see like the thing like lunges me back, you know? Yeah. Um, but that thing broke, dude. And like, yeah, there's some funny anecdotes. Like Charlie, the guy who played um, Mr. Xanadu, Xanadu, he was sitting that outside was watching. Nuts. <laughs> yeah, he was <laughs> nuts, like he dude, did it. crazy actor. I love great it. actor. Huh? I love the way he did that. He's like, ah! there's a there's a shot of bonko causa the guy next to him and yeah. like we're doing a project we're doing a, a feature film together now mm -hmm. uh that's in development um and there's a pro there's a shot dude after at the end where you literally can see an entire character arc on that guy's face in a single shot dude it is insane wow like Go, when you go like if you go back and watch it and you, you watch that scene where where uh, Xanadu is cheering, bro, and you watch his face, you watch Bonko's face, dude. It's ridiculous, bro. Ridiculous. Wow. Mad, awesome. mad, mad, mad acting. Um, but anyway, so like I lunge at Johnny, dude. And then after the take, like I'm walking out, and one of the oh, so I was telling you a story about Charlie. Sorry, Charlie's outside, and as I lunge, dude, and the chain breaks, <laughs> they watch it, everyone's like watching the monitor, and Charlie's like, oh shit. Like imagine because like Johnny loves smoking, so he's like yeah. <laughs> Johnny had a cigarette in his mouth. And I lunged at him like that. The whole cigarette would just turn into ass. Like, <laughs> you know <what> I mean? <laughs> <laughs> oh man, yeah, That's yeah. Some really cool, really cool stories. And there's yeah. um, there's this uh, uh, anyway. So I walk out of the scene after we're done, dude. And like, my foot was bleeding. Like I was walking around, and there was like blood coming out of my foot. Oh, man. Um, and I there had been a piece of glass that had embedded itself from the floor, like into my heel oh uh, yeah halfway like literally like like deep into my heel um and yeah dude like i hadn't felt a thing since i like until i literally walked outside and i was like ah like yeah you know like there's something on, oh, my, God. on my foot but like i was walking on that and, and everything and it's 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 really it's, it's, it's not a joke sometimes when you when you say that like you can literally be so focused so attentive that you actually, yeah you don't, you don't think about it yeah you don't you don't process like things like pain you know yeah. Um, and anyway, so I went to the went to the hospital that night, dude. They gave me this. I kid you not, it's gonna sound like so crazy. They gave me like an inhaler that's like a local anesthetic, bro. Thing is the best in the world, bro. You take you, you, like I, 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 pull, I took one puff of that thing and and literally and it's a medical thing, so it's not like it's like shady or whatever, you know. Yeah. But like your whole body, bro, just goes like and like sits above itself and you like can't feel anything. Oh <laughs> you know, and that's when they like open it up and clean it up, and you know, so wow yeah man i love yeah. set stories dude you're dedicated man that's that's hands down like that just shows how much how dedicated you are as an actor there's another funny story i can tell you so like I, I i got a like mr accident prone like reputation on set because the next day we shot the scene where i had the leather mask yeah um and and we're being so, we're being sold off bro there's a thorn bush that you can see in the thing and in one of the takes when they're like uh uh um when they whistle and we go back to our posts i straight up ran into the thorn bush but not like a little bit like 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 straight into this thing and it was like pegged me man like i was like flipping, like shredded up like by the end well the, by the last couple of days when we shot the the final ring scene man they didn't need to put makeup or scars on me dude like oh my yeah, god like you already, enough, you already you know? got them yeah oh my god that's crazy <laughs> yeah, dude. So how long how long did shooting take we, we shot that uh we shot it in five days we shot oh, it wow. in five days and it was pretty 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 intense uh back-to-back -back shooting obviously because you know like we were very fortunate to have a very workable budget uh yeah. but even that has its has its limitations you know and at the end of the day the ring of beasts is is in many ways a pilot for for a bigger world um so yeah there's yeah, it's so much i i i am in love with the stories and and the, the motions that come from set and even conversations like this like i, I there's in every inch of it i i really enjoy that yeah it's good so. yeah i mean that that short film is awesome i when i got to saw i saw the whole thing i was i had to watch it twice just to just to That's see how awesome, like Robert. just to really catch everything i'm like man this is so good so i was Thank like you. i so need to review this it's like i gotta review this movie hands down
Oh, dude. That some, awesome. some shorts I'll review. I'm like, this is one I have to review. Hands down. It was, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It was that good. But yeah. Oh, dude. I, I mean, up. I think action short films are really becoming the rage now. You're getting a lot of mm -hmm. people there, you know, on YouTube, especially, you know, you got Ring of Beasts on the, at the film festival. You got guys like Marshall Club and yeah. you know, LVP Stunts. And I don't, know if you, I don't know if you ever seen Marshall Club, any of their stuff, but their stuff no. is really good. Yeah. Bro. So, yeah, so as a one one live action fan to another, like if you watch, um, if you watch uh, 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 My Hero Academia, Ale, um, the, uh, with a guy with a backpack, dude, phenomenal camera work, like action out of this world. You watch um, also the live action for One Punch Man. I don't know if you saw it, but that was really well done. That was like proper well done. Yeah. I was very impressed. Yeah, these guys, Marshall Club did some funny crossovers. They did like, what if the Avengers knew Kung Fu? <laughs> and, oh, uh, dude, and it's so dude. funny. It's so funny because the, the guy playing, like one of the founders is playing Thanos. And the way he does Thanos, like he, sp like, he spoofs it so bad. He's like, okay, I'm here for the stone. Come on, I'm looking for the stone. Let's go. I need the stone right here, right here. I'm looking for any right now. And they're like, Avengers assemble. And he goes, all right, I'll get the stone. And next thing you know, they get into this big martial arts fight. And the choreography is really nice, but it's just also comedic at the same time. They've, they've oh, done dude, harder dude. crossovers, like what if Pennywise knew Kung Fu, how to defeat the nun, like stuff like that. They're, they're, their channel is amazing. I actually put them in my Hall of Fame last year because these guys were so, Bro, so good. And they're actually working. Gonna hit it. Yeah, they're actually part of the stunt team on the upcoming Shang-Chi movie. So that's pretty dude, exciting. How, how are you feeling about this next stage of Marvel? Like if we're, if we're talking about this. Um... Well, we got Black Widow tomorrow. So now I'm looking, I want to see Black Widow, see how, you know, just to see that last, her last run in, um, I think it's going to be universe. interesting, especially with the Eternals coming. That's going to be, I think it's going to pose some very interesting questions, and I think we'll get some interesting answers. Um, I agree, especially hearing that Sam Raimi is directing directed Doctor Strange too. That's going to be quite insane because it's supposed to be like Marvel, like MCU's first horror film. So, and yeah, who, the multiverse. Who, of you got Who could you couldn't get a better director than Sam Raimi? Nah. I mean, he's the guy who started Marvel movies. <laughs> yeah. You know, like, I mean, officially, you know what I mean? Like, I mean, before that, I mean, when I was a kid, like flipping Spider-Man, man, was like, like the be all and end all. Like, we couldn't believe it. Yeah. You know? Before that, we had Blade, which was really good. And there we Blade go. was great, Blade. dude. I actually Blade knew, I actually knew the fight choreographer for the third one, Trinity. Like Blade Trinity. Yeah. I actually knew the fight choreographer at the time. We used to, we got in touch a lot. And, you know, he's like, yeah, the whole, the whole thing with Wesley Snipes and the director, they, they were, you know, they were like really mad at each other on the set. He goes, yeah, the media over, they overdid that. It's, you know, they, they did have differences, but they, they worked them out. And, you know, and this guy even worked on Freddy versus Jason, which surprised me when I heard that he was yeah. a flight choreographer. I'm like, you didn't tell me you were choreographing Freddy versus Jason. He's like, yeah, I did. It was like, it was so much fun. Robert England throwing like Kung Fu kicks at Jason and, yeah, I got the train up, but yeah, he but he was telling me like how dedicated like Ryan Reynolds was and mm. Jessica Beale, like they really gave it their all, like training for the film and stuff like that. Mm. So just to hear that, you no, know, those stories were really amazing. Yeah, it's 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 good to it's it, I think you have to, especially these days, you know, like you, you training for a film is a lot more than than the mental prep and the, the research work and the, the body stuff, you know, and there's, yeah. there's something, there's something else that literally happens, which I think is the reason why in the last season of game of Thrones, um, you, you heard those actors literally describe like when they took off those outfits, it was like taking off their skin, man. Yeah. Like, you know, it's like, it's like, you're not even like necessarily training, like you're raising like a character, you know what I mean? Like, and it's a very, it's a very, very special thing. Um, can must be very, very, I know it like the sounds are like odd, but dangerous, you know, uh, you got to make sure that there's certain parameters to play with it, you know, and you got to know where those are. You know? Right. I, I, I speak for myself as an artist because I know everybody has their different way of switching on their machines and getting into roles. But for me, it's like, you got to set those boundaries. If you transcend the boundaries, mm -hmm. then you're, 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 you're not only toying with fire, but you know, like you're, you're not necessarily, sane <laughs> like yeah. you know, there's a time and a place to be and, insane like, and plus like over here in hollywood you know you want the actors who want to do their own stunts but then you got their so-called 
you know, issues were like, no, nope, you can't do your own stunt here because if you get hurt, you know, so and so and so. And then, but then you got Tom Cruise who does the crazy stuff for Mission Impossible, you know, and then, yeah, and then, you know, but then you got others who have that experience, like, you know, like John Claude Van Damme or a Scott, At you know, Scott Atkins, he's, you know, he's getting it. He's dude, that guy is a, is a hit. Oh, dude. That oak is honestly, yeah. I think one of one of one of my my, my top like versatile uh, performers and stunt. Yeah, because he, I've seen him in other, I've seen him in non-action roles. I've seen him in, no, not just doing stuff. I've seen him in where he does straight acting. He, he's he's one of those guys who can balance the two really well. Mm. And I actually talked to him in 2015 um, when he did the movie Close Range. I got to interview him, and I'll never That's forget awesome, this. Bro. But I told him how much of a fan my mom, my mom and my my parents alone got me action films. And my mom, she's the type, like, when she watches a fight movie, she roots for the hero like she's watching a boxing match live. It's hilarious. So it's like, she's like, get him, get him. And I, I crack up every time I hear I see that. But I was telling Scott that, like, my mom's a big fan of his. And, you know, we can't wait for Undisputed 4 to come out. And he's like, at the time, he's like, if your mom watches those kind of movies, there must be a problem with her. But he was joking when he said that. He goes, but she like she lives and even my grandmother and she's like 93 years old she loves action i introduced her to john wick and then we watched the first two and then she looked at me and she goes tell me there's a third one coming out and this was just <laughs> before the third one was coming out I'm like it's coming out in a couple of months grandma and she was like <laughs> all excited like <laughs> oh dude and that's so it's so good man i love dude when people get so fired up over movies it's just so good it's i know it's just, it just like when I saw oh, the trailer dude. for Trigger, I saw the trailer for Trigger, and I knew right away. I'm like, this is a movie I know I'm going to like, you know. Oh, man, well, and like, so what? What? what would, I mean, and that's a huge thing, dude. Like say, saying, uh, it's it's like on your favorite. Like when I read the script, I knew it was a, and I, I think I said this in the in the Q and A. I knew it was a good script when I started reading it because this guy called Alistair Orr like approached me on the internet and he always says like that it was I like, weirded out by that and I was like, I would have been weirded out by it if it was weird, you know. Yeah. But then again, it's pretty. I mean, I am saying that about a movie where a bunch of teenagers are running around a forest with suicide bombs strapped. I know, right? <laughs> but, um, dude, I started reading the script and I was like, okay, cool. Here we go. And I have a simple rule with scripts. It's if by the time you get to page 10, if, if you look at the page count after page 10, uh, before you're on page 50, then you know the movie hasn't gripped you, you know? Yeah. Dude, I got, and I was like on page like, 82 when i looked at the, the page count and i was like oh my days like this is a <laughs> cool movie <laughs> yeah, and, i am stoked <laughs> and i gotta say hands down that had one of the best ensemble casts mm -hmm. i've seen in, in like a local production because you you got local you got ensemble casts who they sometimes don't mesh they don't mesh as well and then you got ones who do mesh well i'm excellent and you guys ranked up there as one of the ones the best ones i've seen because yeah, cost had, cohesion was tight man and, yeah and, I think and it, it had to be you know like and i gotta say you know, know when i talked to Raina in november she said that she gave you the credit for getting everyone together when you weren't shooting she's like yeah we went out for drinks we played laser tag and credit to that goes to cameron because you know <laughs> he's amazing eh? he's like he's the youngest one he's the youngest cast member and he's the one who who brought us all together and you know, I've seen the, I've seen some photos and stuff and yeah, you guys really gelled it well. And yeah, I love, I love Ray. Hey? She's and and her, her family is amazing. I mean, they, they got a kid now and it's just really, she's, she's one of those, those real, real special people where as, as, as many, you know, like characters that you just have to, you know, get on and work with in, in the film industry. She, yeah. she's one of those people who I, I, I'm so happy to say that every person on Beast was like, you know, was like that with her. And our line producer, Andia de Yaka, flipping champion. I literally call her and Reina, they're like angels. Honestly, I mean, in terms of like, not only the authority that they carry themselves with and the things that they can do, but in terms of their willingness to actually just help people and be selfless mm -hmm. out of this world. Eh? And it was it was a joy for me. I mean, I remember, yeah, when we, we, we went out and played the laser tag, did, did she tell you that Kato won? No, <laughs> ironically, Kato, no. <laughs> Kato won the laser tag. And I was just like, and we all named ourselves according to our character names. Yeah. <laughs> so, we, you know, and like flipping, yeah, dude. And then we, that's when we all knew, like Russell. Huh? <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah, like, you know, he's, he's 
awesome, man. Yeah, yeah that, awesome, cat, man. that cast was awesome. And no, I know yeah. not, I know you got a fight background, but I also know that Liesel, who played Aaron, has a fight background. She's a Hokkaido brown belt. With, so I'm like, man. So now <laughs> hearing that you and her actually have the, these fight backgrounds, I want to one day see a look like a South African film with you two like kicking either bad guys or at each other. I mean, dude, I, mean, no, nah, you got hear, me she hear, I think she hears this. She's gonna be like, that might be an idea. <laughs> yeah, no, no joke. I mean, I, you got my mind, you got my mind spinning, you know, like already. Yeah, for sure. And she'd right. actually be, I mean, like, I could, I could, I could settle a, a character for, for Liesl in a, in a second, dude. Uh, when, when I heard that she was into like Akita, dude, I was like, oh, like, you know what I mean? Like, she's got this, like, whole, like, oh, okay, cool. <laughs> like, well, yeah, I mean, that's the thing. Like, yeah, that was the big surprise Jr. I heard when uh, Robert Downey Jr. trained in Wing Chun. And I was like, what? Dude, and our he, DIT for Beast was a Wing Chun, uh, uh, a Wing Chun guy, dude. It, he taught me some of the moves. I'm in yeah. love, dude. As soon as COVID lockdowns free up, that is the first art form that I'm there. You go. No, I know. I, d I dabbled. I dabbled a little bit myself. I learned. I learned a little Shotokan karate, and um, year, a couple of years back, I learned Krav Maga. So you know, and kickboxing. Mm. So I know how that is. That is of course, I have to we got to do it. We got to do an action movie now. Yeah, Always. I gotta get back into. I gotta get back into it big time because <laughs> it's been a while. Would you ever? Would you? Would you ever? Would you ever actually do, like do a cameo or like do a, a part in the movie? Yes, the opportunity rises possibly. I will tell you though, there's a movie that came out in 2015 called The Martial Arts Kid. So I went to a screening over in Orlando for it, and it stars Don the Dragon Wilson, Cynthia Rothrock. It's one of these anti-bullying movies. So I got the DVD, and then and the extras they're talking about. They call it the journey. It's like you know the movie getting its rave. And there's a picture of us at the south at the Orlando screening, and there's me like with the director and a bunch of the other people who went to the screening, and we're all like. Some of us did like a fight pose too, and I'm one of those. I'm one of those guys in the background, like you see doing the fight pose. So I was like, Dude, I'm I in the it. DVD. I dig it, man. And I, exactly I, and, I, and I freak out when I get quoted on DVDs. Like my, some of my quotes appear on the DVDs. Like speaking of Scott Atkins, I appear. I'm, I'm on the front cover of his uh, one of his DVDs. Like the quote appeared for an old site I used to write for. So I was like, just to, just to get that is just mind blowing. Yeah, man. But it is, and it's like you know you. And uh, I think it's in your tagline uh, about World Film Geek as well. Is it just goes? It goes back to 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 why I, th I I think, you know, it's so important to keep making stuff. It's just these movies affect affect us, and we 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 love them. Sometimes we don't love them. Sometimes we hate them. Right. So, you know. So, uh, but it gives us something to like engage with and like share ideas through and experiences through. Man, it's it's really is a magic yeah. industry. Yeah, it and it does help that I have a bachelor of arts in film studies. So, <laughs> that, oh, that I mean, yeah, that that does help. Uh, yeah, that does help. And I and, yeah. and I work day job at a library, so that's even better. So yeah. Oh, where, where where are you at? So I work at a uh, Seminole State College of Florida. It's in it's nearby Sanford. It's about thirty minutes from where I live in Florida. Okay. But I'm their cataloger. I've been doing it for like. A, well, altogether, it'll be my thirteenth year there, but because I moved well, here, yeah, I moved that here. In, well, that shelf is immaculate. Yeah, I moved here in 20, 2007, So, and I'm originally from New York. So, okay, you know, which part? Which part in New York? You West? From? Do you know Westchester okay. County? It's no, like right above. No, so it's right above. So you have New York City, um, which is like the Bronx, Manhattan, the boroughs. So right above it is Westchester County. So I'm from that area. So it's okay, I'm literally cool, like man. about thirty minutes. I was literally about thirty minutes from Manhattan. Yeah, Your brothers I'll, uh, are still I'll, there. I'll I'll produce. Oh, really? Oh, okay, yeah. Because I'll I'll, yeah. I'll um our producer lives in New York. Um, and uh, if we get into uh the Hamptons Film Fest, we wanna we wanna take a, a trip out there, dude. So nice. Yeah. Yeah, my cool. yeah my brothers are still over there, so that's that's a good thing. <laughs> yeah, that so is a cool. That is I can go cool. up there and visit them. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's great, man. Like, yeah, uh, yeah I've, uh, I'm be definitely, definitely a West Coast, uh, West Coast guy. But I, I love visiting the East. You know, there's so many places in the states I still want to see and I want to explore. Yeah, just, I, uh, I've stories. yet to be. Yeah, I've yet to be on the West Coast. So that's the, that's my goal. That's one of my goals. <laughs> oh, really? Dude, yeah. Make it, man. Put it out there, dude. Go. Well, I got go, it, man. Go cause chase. I got it, man. Cause one, some of my, one of my, uh, one of my friends from school that when I was in New York, he's actually a big TV actor now. So, so and he's over there in, in California. So I was like, I gotta go see him. Um, yeah. So yeah, he had a hit show on new girl and then now he's on the neighborhood and I think they're going to her fifth season now. So 
He's pretty. He's pretty big. He's pretty big when it comes to TV. Dude, so I that's used to go awesome, to, man. Yeah. Who is it? Uh, Max Greenfield. Max Green. Oh wow, him. Max Greenfield. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, the new yeah new girl. He played Schmidt, the uh, the douchebag. Twenty nine. Ladies love Schmidt. Just really like, put put it on a jar right now. <laughs> Back, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I went to school with him. I graduated the year before he did. Sure. Wow. Oh, that yeah. is that's amazing, man. You see what I mean? It's just like small it's world. A world. Small it's a world. Small world, man. It is a small, small, small world. Yeah. Um. I'll sure. be I'll be in LA for from beginning of august nice. for a while yeah and then uh then be back i mean covid covid is is crazy and yeah and everything that's i mean i know you just gotta i know finally i'm going i know finally in august i'm going back full time to my day job after a year and god it's over a year and a half or just about a year and a half because yeah bro I now i'm doing like, like now i'm doing now I'm, now I'm like a couple days i'm a couple days over there and then a couple days working from home but mm. Now it's like next month I'm back full time after a year and a half, so that's gonna be in a lot. That's gonna be that. Yeah, that is gonna that's gonna be a lot. I got a yeah. uh, I got an interesting question for you to All right. to to answer. What what about movies is the best thing for you as world filmmaker? Just just to see that anyone can make a movie. Just that mere fact. It doesn't matter if it's low budget. It doesn't matter if like you're making a home video. Like if you think you have the ability to make a movie definitely you got to do it just go go for your dream don't don't let anyone tell you otherwise you know mm -hmm. and it's just there's so much out there like so much different genres so much different and then you granted we've had a lot of remakes and reboots and all that but this is why i love indie films a lot and even ones like foreign films because they're all like mostly you know they have all original stories a lot of them and or like we talked about you know influ you know influence from other filmmakers to bring your own vision to it and it's just always been something i loved since i was a kid so sure i just figured yeah. as i got older i was like what do i want to do in terms of film like yep i'll take film studies i took a screenwriting course and but what do I really want to do? So I was like, why don't I just write about films? You know, see where it goes from there. And it's been a long 20 year journey for me. I mean, I started, I did my own little websites first on just martial arts films. Went up to this one website called KungFuCinema.com for seven years. I've been on print, you know, stuff like that. And I feel like now since 2015 World Film Geek is like the culmination of everything I've worked for all these years. Because now I get to talk about all films from everywhere and getting to talk to getting the chance to interview people like you and everyone else, you know, all these other people from all around the world that I've watched on screen. And just to, just to can't, just to get a chance to talk to you guys. It's just, I, it's just an experience of its own. And to me, it's like, that's priceless. So I've, yeah. I've, you know, in the past I've had people go, Oh, do you get paid for this? I'm like, no, but just the experience of getting to talk to people who make films and, you know, enthused, especially once we're enthusiastic about the, the love of their art, that's just, for me, that's priceless. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's cool. awesome, man. Thank you for sharing that with me. That's yeah. It was, it's, yeah. Like, it's like, I don't, I don't need money for that. I just, I just love doing it. Just like everyone loves, you know, actors love doing their art. It's like me loving, you know, writing about films and getting to meet people in the industry and, have an appreciation for it, no matter where they're from. Yeah. So do you, uh, do you, do you see Beast moving into like a serious space or a film space? That's a good, you know what? I can kind of see it as a series. Hey. Um, so I, I kind of, yeah, I, I would see it. I could see it as a, I stretched out as a series. Like nice, you know. nice. So, good choice, man. Good so, choice. What, yeah. So you got, you got something to tell us about that? <laughs> yeah developing uh developing the bigger world is has always been the plan the, re the reason we made the the short film is to 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 entice the developments of the world um so yeah. and it yeah it's big it's rich it's it's the start of a universe man that's what i think is so special about the ring of beasts that yeah. a lot of people really need to you know when you watch it and be aware of that it's like it literally is a glimpse into this this world this this world that is actually not too far removed from our own Yep. um 
and it yeah it's gonna blow your mind man. <laughs> like when you when that when the, when the fruition of it comes it's it's a it's a the start of a life's work for me you know one that i've been yeah. working on since i was like grade one dude i know that sounds ridiculous but it's true hey um sometimes yeah. sometimes our childhood you know stuff we do in childhood can be an asset later on like for exactly. instance uh there's this uh director from finland jesse haya and he created this character called rendo in middle school and it's kind of like he he was influenced by batman and he actually did a live action flick a few years ago Dude. and it's about the, yeah it's about this guy who his 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 family was killed in front of him because he discovered something about this organization that he worked for and so they killed his family but he still lives so he takes this tar and puts it on his face and becomes a mask and puts on this jacket that his daughter gave him as a father's day gift and he becomes like this this mute vigilante who uses like his actions and he calls himself rendell which is the hungarian word for order that was like my favorite film of the decade of 20 mm -hmm. from 20 2010 to 2019 and apparently there's going to be a sequel to it that's Hectic. hopefully going to get that one soon but uh, yeah we, we ended up getting oh right here speaking of i just found it oh wow yeah, that's the that's dude the look at that man yeah so dude. he created he created this in middle school and he oh. turned it in he finally decided as he got older he's going to make it into a movie and just like ring of beast he started out as like a proof of concept type like a trailer and then he expanded onto the to this so Dude, yeah man you you, you got to give me a, a a full list of like 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 oh definitely we'll start off with 10. i got your you i got your up. email now so i'm good i've done that yeah. too like back yeah, in yeah. middle school back in middle school my a friend of mine like he, he never watched a martial arts movie in his whole life he goes could you recommend what martial arts movies to watch i got him and he ended up getting hooked after i gave him a list he's like he's like man i wish i knew about this earlier this is so cool <laughs> <laughs> I will Man, say, first... I will say though, what I like about martial arts films is a lot of you know people are like they're mindless films, but there are those that really are emotional. And so one of the ones I will definitely recommend is Best of the Best, which came out in 1989. This is the this is still the only martial arts movie that makes me cry at the end of the movie, hmm. and that's because it, the movie's so emotional. Like it, it's about the U.S. karate team training against Team Korea, but it's about the team having to get together, overcome their differences. But the finale was just not only did it have one of the best fights in an American martial arts film, but just the way it ends, I was I I teared up. I was like, I couldn't believe that they ended it like this. It was just like, oh my God. And hmm. they have they had, you know, Eric Roberts is in it, James Earl Jones is the coach. And yes, Darth Vader is the coach. So no, you know, I'm for it. I'm yeah, for it. James Earl Jones, you put that guy in a movie, I'll be there, dude. Yeah, he's like, yeah, he's he like, he's like, he's like, and he says the famous you tagline. Have come to, you have come to train karate today. Well, <laughs> all right. So his famous, the famous tagline of the movie is something that he says. He goes, "A team is not a team if you don't give a damn about one another." <laughs> true. That's true. I'm like, sure. that could not be any more true. Yeah. That's what the tagline of the movie is. Sure. And that's yeah that's absolutely that's absolutely correct you know and like even even that, on a set like the cast everybody work together if they don't give a damn about each other you know they don't care about each other and you can tell man in finished product you can tell if the cost was not close enough yeah like you yeah. you guys epitomized that that quote with ring of beasts and even trigger you guys were like the epitome of that that line right there <laughs> thank you man thank you so much yeah dude oh yeah I could, again you see i get like lit up about these stories because um there's so many there's so many from beast and just that's like that's beast alone you know like you get a lot of stories from set but uh with beast man it was, it was something something the start of something really special you know um and knowing all of this is also so true going back to like the masks like yeah i mean we could we, we could we could chat for hours about it man like, I know. But, um, yeah, we'll have yes. well we got each other's emails and zooms now so we got time we'll always have exactly time. we got time man and i we definitely just whenever you know whenever we're both our schedules are great yeah so absolutely, man. i do want to talk about this because um we are going to be it's going to be coming out a bit next month um you are going to be on netflix in the kissing booth three you gotta yeah so obviously we're not going to spoil anything but can you give us a little background on who you're playing in that in that movie uh unexpected very unexpected character um 
I could say it, I could say this much. I am a curveball. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I'm a, yeah, I'm a, I'm a big curveball in the, in the movie. Um, not in the way that you might expect, um, in, 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 but but in a very, in a way, I think that just is like a cherry on top. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. there's so much. I don't know if you you've seen the first two, but uh, there's so much going on in Elle's life, and um, you know, like there's obviously deciding where to go to like college is such a big decision for yep. for everybody you know and especially more so with her like she seems to just get herself into these really precarious situations when it comes to like a best friend and a, and a lover you know yeah um and and i i come in like a wrecking ball <laughs> to, to to all of that but in a subtle in in in, in, in a subtle way not in yeah. like a, in a huge uh, yeah. huge overstated way but uh, i'm say, very excited i'm excited to see what yeah what what, what, what yeah the trailer yeah the trailer just came out the other day so i got to see the trailer and i what i love they're, they're an amazing cast day eh? joey king is exceptionally professional super talented jacob elordi is a phenomenal artist you know and and joel courtney um is also such a great person like i mean I, I, like each of them have these amazing traits aside from their professionalism uh that that really is that really is outstanding you know and it was a, an absolute joy to be working with that that cast and that crew and, and it looks like it made really good use of the locations there in south africa and that's another thing i love about south african cinema they got like some of those beautiful locales to use in their, you know, the films, you know. Oh and yeah, that, dude. and and that's why I like in the '90s they I I read an article about how a lot of the American martial arts films used South Africa as to shoot there because for budgetary reasons, but also because of how beautiful it is or it looks over there. You know, like so yeah. many movies were shot there, like uh, yeah, American Ninja Two that we talked about with with Jonathan and you have American Kickboxer was another one that that's one of my favorites. Um, Mark DeCoscos from John Wick 3 shot Kickboxer 5 in South Africa. Dude, that that John, the John Wick like le legacy dude is insane. You know, oh, yeah. like, right from the, from, from, from the directors to obviously Keanu Reeves himself is like, there's like a proper lineage of, of, of people who understand action to its core. You know, yeah, I mean, did you see who he really got? For the, did you see who he got for the new one? He's got Donnie Yen. You got Scott Atkins. Yeah, uh, Donnie Yen, Hiroyuki Sonata. Uh, I'm like, dude. No, this, this next one's gonna be in. Yeah, I don't even want to think about it. It's just oh my be, god, I get too excited. I'm just. I I'm know. Just like, we, oh I god. know. When I heard my red Scott Atkins, I was like, I was like the fanboy. Me was like, ah! I'm like, oh my god, <laughs> it's gonna be crazy. <laughs> Oh, like, dude, yeah, it's going to be, it's going to oh be good. Oh, gosh, man. And then, yeah, actually, it was a Kickboxer 5, you know, Mark, Mark DeCoscos, you know, he, he did that film in Johannesburg. And the villain is actually a South African kickboxer, like a former kickboxer turned promoter. And he's actually played by one of the local heroes there, James Ryan. He was, uh, he was the star of the Killer Be Killed movie I told you about earlier. And, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. And he plays the villain in this one. And he he's such a great actor and you know to, to see that he kept because i understand he trained for killer be killed he trained for the film but he kept up the training so it's like he and he still holds his own he even got to kick gavin hood's butt and kill him in the movie so you know you know gavin hood the the guy who directed chotzi and yeah Totsi, yeah. yeah so yeah Totsi, he, yeah. he, he went he, to my school and university dude yeah that's a great i finally saw that movie a couple months ago it was like i finally got the chance to see it i'm like this holy crap i'm like i should have seen this when it first came out it's so good but uh yeah it's, it's phenomenal and now that now they got older now they're now they're releasing older south african films here like i don't know if you know this but um there were ones that were geared towards the black audiences during apartheid and they were like they're called the b scheme and i'm like i started what i started looking you know doing research on this so you know apartheid ended when apartheid ended they uh these films were apparently lost, but this one company out of Cape Town found, started finding them and they started restoring them. They want to present sure. them to newer generations like like us and everything. So I started watching some of these and they're like our version of black exploitation, you know, some of them. And, <laughs> but they're just like regular, you know, they're just normal films. These people and, you know, they they made them for these black audiences because they, they banned them for a while, you know. They couldn't release them. In so you say these, these are films that are like the equivalents of like the Superfly era. 
Yeah, some of them. Like the first one was like Joe Bullet. I think it's called Joe Bullet. It was a you know black exploitation flick. Like after two screenings, Apartheid banned it. So then the guy who wrote and produced it, it was an Afrikaner named Tony Van der Merve. He proposed to the government, why don't I make films for this audience? Because they deserve to have films. So they they let him make like I think they made like over fourteen hundred films. And they would screen them in like these little houses over there, like the little villages for the black audiences, but they're all different types of films, like action, comedy, dramas. You know, I think they even did a Western, and this was until Apartheid ended. It was crazy. Dude, thank you for telling me that, man. Like, literally, I'm literally just sitting here. You're the second one, because I, I talked to Chris about this, and he was like, I didn't know anything about these movies. So, like, it's just, like, just to hear, like, it's one of the free, the first free ones. You know, you're, you're understanding, now you're getting, because that helps you with your industry there, you know, the history of the South yeah. film industry. I mean, yeah. I, I know about black exploitation and like you know the, the film noir and like the, the rise and fall of the classic Hollywood era and, and and obviously the talkies and the silent ones before that. But like, man, that's crazy to hear. You know? Yeah, it's, it's crazy just... eh, that we, we 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 were taught so much about the states, but you know you could even about. Well, yeah, I remember, I remember hearing David Oloyo talk about um, a United Kingdom and when he did Selma. By Martin Luther King, he literally did a screening in Selma, mm -hmm. and at the back of the audience in Alabama, someone stood up and said they had no idea that that happened in Selma. Yeah, that's just to hear that is just mind blowing. You know, it's just I think that in a way, films does give a you know offer history to people who might not understand everything, and you know, you're like I said, you're the second person to know about these type these these older films that they released for just the black audiences. But, and they had like typical titles like Rich Girl and Hostage and Revenge, you know, it's like they had tip, you know, typical titles, but just to just and I believe Tony Van der Merve, he actually got an award for all this accomplishment at the Durban Film Festival years a couple of years ago. So, you know, he became he was like a champion to these guys, you know. And just the just that history. That's another thing I love about movies, you know, you get to research the history of these films and you know how important that is you know mm. originally when i studied film when i took film studies my specialty was hong kong cinema i love hong kong cinema bruce lee jackie chan you know those guys dude, I, jackie flipping chan dude there's a whole bunch of movies that people don't know about from jackie chan that will blow your flipping mind yeah you know and it's like, we don't even, uh, you know, like in a largely westernized culture, you don't even see those. You know, there's movies out of Russia that are insane. Their CGI was leagues above everybody else's like 10 years ago. You know? Oh, yeah. Like, um, <clears throat> there's this one director, Choi Hark. He was like the first guy. He was, the, he was, he was called the Steven Spielberg of Hong Kong because he brought the Hollywood style effects to Hong Kong cinema because he studied that in Texas. He learned about filmmaking. Wild. So, What's his name? Choi Hark. He did a Chinese ghost story. If you, if okay. Yeah, so that's that's the movies, and he he also broke gently through him once upon a time in China. As Wong Fei Hong, yeah, legends, man. Legends. But I will say one of one of my all time favorite Hong Kong films. I got it right here. It's called Infernal Affairs. And we were not. This is the guy who's gonna play the um. Where is he? He's gonna play the man uh the Mandarin in Shang Chi. Dude, right here. Tony Long. It's gonna be a dude. That's gonna be a redemption for the Mandarin character, hey? Yeah. The, Very excited the, um, to see how they're gonna. This bring movie back. inspired Martin Scorsese to do The Departed. Get out of here! This is the move. This is the movie that that spawned The Departed. It was influenced by this movie. Dude, okay, that has to go on the list. That has to go on the list. That's gonna go on the list. That's gotta go on the. That's gotta go on the the the, 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 the ten films. Uh, yeah. Cameos. Dude, I'm like, I'm like, I want to give you a list, but I'm pretty sure you've seen everything that I'm gonna, I'm gonna, <laughs> I'd give you, bro. I've seen hmm. some. I mean, I could definitely use one. There's one I really want to see. We don't we don't have it in the US, sadly. Um, and Rain is in it. Van der Merve with Rob Van Buren and Rena Swart. I saw the trailer for it and I fell out of the edge of my fell out of my seat because I was laughing so hard. But she played his daughter in the movie. <laughs> and he's he finds out she's marrying an Englishman and he's supposed to be like a boar farmer and he's like he doesn't know what to do because he doesn't want to tick his dad off, but yet he wants to stay a little bit and Rob is just the trailer just made me laugh just like all the one-liners he does in the movie like there's a scene in the trailer where he's crying he's like I love you 
I don't know. I can live without you. And his wife is like, is that you or the beer talking? And he's like, it's me. It's the beer. <laughs> he's like talking to the beer. <laughs> and, then he's, and, he's just there with a be- and then he's standing over the beer in front of the mirror. And he's just like, man, what are you doing? And he's like, Dr. Sachs watching him drinking. <laughs> it's, like, it's like, and that's the, that's the kind of comedy I love. I love that old school style comedy. You don't really get, oh, no, last time I got anything like movie. that was um, Airplane and the Naked Gun movies. Like, that's oh, yeah, 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 yeah. They yeah, take yeah. everything literally. That's like, you don't, like, yeah. you don't get that. Because everything. Here I mean, I mean you, you get like dribbles of it. Like, you know, Dave Batista in uh, Guardians of the Galaxy, you know? Yeah. But, like, but, but, but a lot of our comedy. You want to fly over your head, you know? I just. Yeah. Nothing flies over my head. A lot of our Reasons. comedies here are all like mostly raunchy stuff. And I'm like, I can only take so much of that. Yeah. You know? I'm the same, man. man. I'm the exact like, same. Actually, that is the, that is, that is the project that I told you about a little bit earlier as well is a project that me and uh, Bonko are putting into development with a few other names that you will be familiar with. Um, yeah, it's going to be, it's going to, it's going to tackle that exact idea about comedies. Nice. And like kind of, yeah. kind of throwing it back because they are they're too raunchy these days, man. Yeah, I, I like, I like the old school. I, I like old comedies. You know, I grew up with the Marsh Brothers, Laurel and Hardy, Abbott and Costello. Mm. I grew up with those guys and, you know, and then, you know, Carol Burnett and Hee Haw and, mm. you know, like I said, airplane and naked gun movies, like those, those comedies, like those are the ones I really miss. Like you don't really, you don't really get those anymore. Everything's just too, too much exploitation for me. Yeah, Laurie and Fry, and you know, dude, it's, it's, it's true. Because, I still dude, watch, feels stuff, yeah, I still too, watch stuff like funny. Porky's and Revenge of the Nerds. I mean, because that's the 80s, you know, that's where I grew up. I grew up in the 80s, you know, dude, like, Revenge of the Nerds is a goodie. Yeah, that was, have you seen have you seen any of uh, Akira Kurosawa's stuff? Oh yeah, I got a whole you know, up there. It's like all my a lot of my Kurosawa movies. Yeah, I love Dude. Seven Samurai. I love his first movie, Sanjuro Sugata, about the judo guy. I love that one. Dude, I haven't yeah. I haven't even seen that one, man. I literally just like finished Ran. No. Oh wow. Yeah. Yeah. I also like yeah. I I love Japanese films. You know, I there's even a there's a filmmaker I like, um, Juzo Itami, who. Uh, he actually got beaten up by the Yakuza for one of his movies because <laughs> it was a comedy about the Yakuza shaking down a hotel and there's this lady who come out and she was played by his wife and she always like broke negotiations down like you know to them to stop harassing these people and because of that movie he got his butt kicked by the Yakuza and sadly like I think he yeah he died and a couple years later he killed himself like if I remember right but I love Juzo Tommy's work Tom Popo is one of my favorites it's about a ramen noodle shop and that was that was one of the first ones I saw with Ken Watanabe, who's a great actor. You know, he's in uh God he was in Godzilla and Batman Begins, played played the fake Raz Al Ghul. Yeah. yeah. Dude, so, that guy's a phenomenal actor. That guy's a phenomenal actor. Yeah, yeah. He's the one who primes the bomb, right? In front of Godzilla. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I love mm-hmm. I love Battle Royale. That's one of my I love Kinji Fukasaka's work, you know. It's sad that he sure. didn't you know, it's sad that he didn't get to finish the second one because he, he died, but his son took over. So, yeah, man. Yeah, dude. Flip. What a legacy, man, Albert. This has been such a great chat, dude. Yeah. Like, honestly, you can you can invite me anytime, bro. I'll be here. <laughs> yeah, awesome. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, well, even just a chat. We don't even need to do a podcast. We don't even need to do a, need to do a podcast. We can do a full-on podcast, man. We can, yeah, we can, just, we can just, just come on Zoom and just chat away whenever. whenever. Exactly, man. I'm yeah, that's stoked, awesome. Dude. Yeah, that's what we got to do. Yeah, yeah but, I'm pumped for it, man. So... Yeah, you got a lot of stuff coming up. So, all right, you know what? I was gonna keep this a secret, and so I'm gonna I'm gonna let this out of the bag right now. So, last year I did the world, first ever World Film Geek Awards. Mm. So, I had an award called Breakout Star of the Year. So last year I had this act, American actress Liana Liberato. She had three stellar films, gave three stellar performances, different genres. She did a a comedy called Banana Split. And no, not to be confused with the Banana Splits movie. That's a different movie. Yeah, I was about to, I was about to say, dude. <laughs> no, it's a different movie. And then she did a drama called To the Stars, and then she did a horror film called The Beach House. So I'm like, all right, you know, she, this was her year. This, so she's got the breakout star work. So, all right. I, I will, yeah, I'm, I was going to keep this a secret, but I'm going to let this out now. Dude, you are the 2021 breakout star oh, of the year. Because you, oh, tri- you had triggered, you had trigger, technically you had triggered in January in South Africa. You got Ring of Beasts. You got Kissing Booth Three, dude. This is, this is, uh, this is your year, man. So, 
Congratulations. You, you are the breakout star of 2021. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, World Film Geek. Thank you, Albert, man. That is such, that is, that is, that is humbling to me, man. I'm, I'm and really, just really so the grateful. fans know, I gave Cameron his first ever piece of artwork and I did the Funko Pop of BJ. Yeah, oh. no, literally, literally <laughs> that, that needs to be, that needs to be actually publicized because I, these are very, very critical things for me, you know, and I view this as literally like, I'm just getting started, man. I am just getting started. And you know, it's like, funny. It, I, it, no, it's funny. I gave, uh, Raina was nominated a couple of years ago for the lullaby. She never, she didn't get the award. But at the Rolf Film Geek Awards, I gave her um, triggered one best was one of the two best foreign film awards, and then she won best horror film for the Hex because the Hex just came out just when I was the day of the deadline. So, and I gave her one of the best new director awards, and she said that was the first ever awards she's ever gotten. And to hear that was just that meant a lot to hear that. One, yeah. I gave you your first fan art and her her first film award. Technically, I know dude. it's just this like so stuck, dude. oh my I god! I've literally I've I printed it out, man. Like I I keep these things in a special, in a special file, dude. It means a lot, man. That's awesome. So thank you, thank you, Albert. You are welcome. I really appreciate man. you. So everyone, if you are watching the LA Shorts Film Festival right now, check out Ring of Beasts with Cameron Scott because this is an amazing thirty minutes. It's definitely worth the thirty minutes a great story, a great tale, and check out the Kissing Booth 3 on August of the 11th, and Cameron, man, just keep running with it, man. I can't wait to see more of your stuff and see where it goes, man. It's yeah. been an absolute honor to finally talk to you after God, because <laughs> we kept in touch, time, but man. now it's like we finally got to talk face-to-face, -face and mm -hmm. I just feel completely honored to have talked with you today. I feel, I feel the same, man. I feel honored to talk to you. Hey, GDG, man. Thank you. All right. So, everyone, check out worldfilmgeek.com for news, interviews, reviews. Check out the YouTube channel for uh, some upcoming trailer reactions and interviews. And uh, check out the World Film Geek podcast. You can check it out on Anchor, Google Podcasts, and some other stuff. So, once again, thank you, everyone, for checking out this episode of the World Film Geek podcast. And Cameron, thank you again. We're talking about it and um before we go cameron you got your own podcast maybe you want to plug that the viral wellness oh, yeah so yeah, yeah so that, i follow it i followed i followed <laughs> the viral wellness so let's let's do a quick plug it. on that before we sign off <laughs> so an absolute legend who i cannot wait to actually give a debut for screen because he's gonna do it uh is my business partner kakisa rabada more well known in the world over as being perhaps one of arguably one of the best international bowlers um, in the world for cricket. And um, he's currently playing in Ireland. Uh, we started Kingdom Come together. And Kingdom Come's initiative is to inform and entertain, inspire, and educate. Uh, that's exactly all, all five of those pillars are met in Beast. All five of those pillars will be met in everything that we do. And one of those projects is, um, yeah, the viral wellness uh, run through our subdivision Zapcar Studios um that you can check them out on instagram at uh, at uh, studios underscore zapcast uh zapcast underscore studios rather and um yeah at the viral wellness and at the viral wellness sa is fine you can find us on twitter and, and also listen to us on buzzsprout um uh, apple podcasts google podcasts uh spotify and yeah we, we we talk about everything that's got to do with wellness especially in the context of COVID 19 that's what started the initiative um and yeah King, kingdom comes got its own uh set of podcasts coming out called the story behind the story and the first thing we're going to be taking a look at is our debut project the ring of beasts yeah awesome so everyone you take care and uh we will see you next time at the world film geek podcast so thanks a lot everyone and take care dude i'm a breakout star from the world film geek dude i'm so pumped man <laughs> oh, dude, <I'm> pumped. <laughs> thank you man all right everyone take care Have a great day, guys. Bye.